microscopic battles between tiny predators and prey are raging across the British countryside all the time. And without them, we'd be overrun with pests. One aphid, if it was left to reproduce unchecked, could become billions in just one season. Well, clearly the natural system works, otherwise I might be knee-deep in aphids and other pests right now. But what happens if you bring the outside in? Large-scale greenhouse growing is big business in the UK. This way farmers can satisfy demand for all year round produce. It may protect them from the weather, but it doesn't protect them from the same old pests. A big outbreak of aphids could be potentially devastating to us as a business and, and the crop because uh, it would dramatically reduce the marketable yield of tomatoes that we have. Would you ever consider using pesticides here? We'd really try not to. They're pretty unacceptable to the general public and they're expensive to apply. Instead, Peter and the vast majority of greenhouse farmers around the country have turned to more natural and ingenious control methods. In this little tube is a batch of dead aphids and by sprinkling them over the tomato plants we're rather bizarrely protecting them from aphid infestation. Sound strange? Well this is where it gets even weirder. In our studio we're placing these dead aphids under a macro lens and with the help of Chris Jeffs from Oxford University we're going to see how they're helping farmers. I'm looking for a big black mass inside of the dead aphid. Oh, 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 oh. That looks like a leg or antenna of something. Yep. It's this definitely is... moving. Inside the dead aphid here, we actually have another species of insect. Oh, and that insect is a parasitic wasp. Emergence can take hours. We want to find one that's already started the process. Oh. It started. Yeah, look, it's chewing its way out of the aphid. The head's out already, and tenny. I mean, that's actually quite gruesome, isn't it? You've got a live wasp emerging from the dead remains of this aphid host. She's virtually out. Yeah. One last push, and she's free, that's it. But how did the wasp get inside a dead aphid? This wasp is aphidious so-called because it has an uncanny ability to track down aphids and a gruesome way of dealing with them. And there's a nice pile of aphids for her. Sensing the aphids, she then checks them out with her antennae and begins the attack. Oh, look, look. Oh, oh yes. Go. She's that got it. quick. It's over in a fraction of that a second. That was quick. She then continues on a rampage. There again, again. Ooh. Oh, it's fantastic. She brings her abdomen between her legs and stabs each aphid in turn. You might think that the wasp actually stings the aphid and it might die, but, but of course it isn't that, is it? Their sting is what they use to lay the egg inside the aphid. This is a dead aphid that had an egg laid inside it 10 days ago. What we can see is the eggs now hatched, and this here is actually the larvae of the parasitoid. Can you moving, see it? It's moving. It keeps its host alive, so it can feed on its tissues inside, but it only eats the vital organs last. It keeps it alive as long as it can. Two weeks later, time for the process to start again. And that's just one. Like, imagine each wasp can lay about three, 400 eggs at a time. You can really see how you can just decimate aphids in your greenhouses or your crops. By utilising this natural behaviour, farmers up and down the country now have the helping hand of these wonderful wasps, helping to keep British veg on our tables all year round.